Sensitivity labels in Microsoft 365 are a really powerful way of enforcing classification of information. They're super easy to set up and you can use them to automatically tag documents with a sensitivity label to control permissions and for data loss prevention purposes. They can even be useful in helping you to achieve ISO 27001. Let's take a look at how we set up some simple policies. To get started, go to m 365 dot cloud dot microsoft and then click on admin you then need to click on show all and then microsoft purview on the left hand side click on information protection you then need to click on sensitivity labels before you jump into configuring the sensitivity labels the business needs to decide what the sensitivity labels are going to be and you need to think a bit about how you classify information from a compliance perspective but also how you might be planning to use these labels for data loss prevention or for controlling permissions so make sure you involve the right stakeholders before you set this up. So the first label I'm gonna create is internal file. So give it a name at the top here. So the display name is how it's going to appear in the Microsoft 365 applications, such as Microsoft Office. So I'm also gonna call this internal file. You've then got label priority. Now the priority has nothing to do with the sensitivity level here. The priority dictates how high up the list that this sensitivity label will appear. If you'd like these labels to be organized by how frequently they're used, then you may want to consider which one is gonna apply in most cases and set that to the highest. Alternatively, if you'd rather organize this alphabetically, you can set everything to highest and all of it will be organized alphabetically automatically. Description for users, this is really important because some of these could be a bit subjective. Now, you want to create some kind of policy that dictates how information should be classified, but in reality, your end users are gonna be looking at these labels in Microsoft 365 every day, and this information and description needs to be easily accessible to them. So let's just explain when this label should be applied. There's our description. We can give the label a color, so I'm gonna I'm going to give this a red color because I want it to be really important that no one uses this outside of the organization. And then you want to click on next. Okay, so on this page, we are defining the scope for this label. So what can this label be used for? Are we just talking about files or should it also be used for emails? Now, sensitivity labels for emails is an interesting discussion point. Really, emails are just as much data and information as a file is. So why would you not want to classify them? Especially if you're sending emails outside of the organization, it's helpful to let people know that you consider an email to be confidential but you may have some labels that apply just to files and other labels that you use for emails. So again, this needs some thought. When you send an email, however, it will automatically pop up and ask people to enter that sensitivity label. Can be a bit annoying at first, but you do get used to it quicker than you think. So for this particular label, I'm not gonna turn this on for emails and I'm gonna click on next. And here we have a few different options here. Do we want to use this to control access? I.e. we're gonna say only certain people can view files that have this label applied, or do we just want to use this for marking content and potentially data loss prevention policies? In this case, I don't want to use it to control access. I'll do another video on that at another time. For now, we're gonna tick apply content marking, which means it's gonna add it to headers, footers, or watermarks on the labeled items. So let's click next. Now you can automatically label files and emails, and this can be a really good way of avoiding user error and making sure things are labeled consistently. Now you would need something like a Microsoft Enterprise E5 subscription in order to use auto labeling. The way it works, if you turn that on, is you can define conditions such as files that contain certain keywords or types of information, and then you can automatically apply the label or recommend the users apply the label. So this can be really powerful. So what you would do is you'd add your condition, select content contains, and then you would add a sensitive information type. Now you can use one of these many predefined sensitive info types such as financial information, personal information like passport numbers, etc. Or you can create your own sensitive information types by using keywords or key strings. So let's leave this turned off and click on next. And we can see here that if we are using these sensitivity labels to apply to Microsoft Teams or groups or SharePoint sites, 
then you can further use that to apply policies such as controlling the level of access that internal and external users have to labeled items and also managing things like external sharing permissions, conditional access and private teams discoverability. We're not going to cover that in today's video so let's click on next and let's click on create label. Once you've created a sensitivity label in order for that label to be visible in the Microsoft 365 app you have to publish them using a policy. Before we do that, we're going to create one more label. So let's click on don't create a policy yet, because really you want to make sure you've got all of the sensitivity labels created correctly. You've had approval from the business and then create a policy to publish them to everyone. You also need to make sure that end users know this is coming and how to use these sensitivity labels, because otherwise your help desk is going to be flooded with requests for information as to what is going on. So make sure you do manage that change and keep communication properly. So here's our first label and let's click create a label to create the second one. This one I'm going to call it email confidential and display name email confidential and simple description for emails that contain confidential and I'm going to use this red again and click on next. Let's turn that off and I'm going to turn off files and other data assets because I just want this label to appear for emails. So let's click on next and again apply content marking because I don't yet want to use these for access management. So next, let's turn on content marking and you can decide whether this is going to be a watermark, a header in the document or a footer. I tend to like adding it as a footer. So let's tick that and tick customize text. So we can say what color do we want that font to be? So I'm going to make this red. Where do you want this aligned font size and what do you want it to say? So you can either add a line of text here or just keep it simple and use the same name as the sensitivity label. So I'm going to say email confidential, which is the name of my sensitivity label and click on save and then press next. I'm not going to turn on auto labeling and we're not going to use it for groups in sight. So I'm going to click next again and then create label. And we don't want to create our policy yet. So let's click on that and then click on done. Now, before we publish these labels, you can go back in and edit them if you want to make any changes. So let's click on this one and click edit label. OK, so we're going to click on next and review these settings again. Now, we don't want to apply these to emails. We just want them to apply to files. Um, I've left content marking unticked by accident. So let's click on next there, turn on content marking, add my footer, customize the text and click on save. OK, so it's now time to publish our labels and create a policy. So I'm going to tick all of the labels that I wish to publish and then click on publish labels. Next thing we want to do is click on next, click on next again. And we've got the option here to decide who will have access to these labels. So you can click edit there if you want to specify users and groups to include, or we can just leave that as all users and groups, which is what I want to do, and then click on next. And we've got a few options here. So the first option is that if a, if a user wants to remove a label, they would have to provide some kind of justification. So they'll get a pop up and they'll have to enter some text just explaining why they are changing that label. Now that's particularly important if you're going to be using this to control access or for data loss prevention policies. Because what you don't want is people just changing the label to bypass the policies. So if there's at least some accountability, they have to enter a justification vacation, they might think twice about doing that. So I'm going to tick this box. We've then got require users to apply a label to their emails and documents. So this is essential. This is a thing that actually forces them to apply a label. You really need to make sure you tick that box. Otherwise, they're probably not going to use these labels at all. You then got require labels for Fabric and Power BI content. If you're not using that, then don't worry about that. And an option to create a link to a custom help page. So you could build a page somewhere, maybe on your SharePoint intranet, that just explains a bit more about how and when to use these labels. And if you do that, you can then tick that and enter the URL to that custom help page. Click on next 
and you've got the option of applying a default label. So I don't want to do that because again, if you apply a default label, what that could cause is people to just always use that one because it's easier. So let's click next. You then got applying a default label to emails. So if you've attached a file to that email, you can have it inherit the label from that document or you can have it not using a default so people are required to still think about it and apply a label. So it really depends on your requirements there. I'm gonna just set this to none for now. And again, do you want people to have to label their emails? If you don't like the idea of that, you can turn it off here and still have the enforcement for the documents. So let's click on next. And you've then got meetings and calendar events. So I'm not gonna require people to label meetings and calendar events in my case. But again, that's really dependent on your requirements. And you can set the default settings here. So click on next again. You've then got Fabric and Power BI content. I'm not using that, so click on next and then give it a policy. So I'm gonna call this sensitivity labels version one and click on next and then click on submit. So as it says here, it can take 24 hours to publish the labels to selected user apps. So it really is as simple as that. Now, once this policy has propagated and these labels are being applied to documents, you can then start thinking about data loss prevention policies, access control, and various other governance settings within Microsoft Purview, utilizing these labels if that's how you intended to use them. Otherwise, you can just use these to make sure your files are classified and ensure compliance with things like ISO 27001. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please subscribe for more content like this, and I'd love to hear your feedback or questions in the comments.